just going to be a little bit different. So I'll be sharing the pulpit with our youth leader, Gabrielle. If I could get you to stand up. And we went into a trip together, and she's going to share with you the first part, and we'll tell you all about what we've been up to. them to obey God's laws. We are to reflect God's character in everything that we are, demonstrating qualities such as compassion, mercy, humility, and forgiveness. We're also called to glorify God in everything that we do. The whole purpose of who we are is to give glory, because he is the great I am. Now, what's one way that we can give glory to God? through serving others. Our purpose is rooted in having this loving relationship with God that then extends out to serving others. And Jesus was the prime example of having a serving heart. We read in Mark 10, 44 to 45, and it reads, And whoever wants to be first must be a slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. True greatness in God's kingdom is achieved through humble service to others. We must be able to follow the example of Jesus Christ, who served sacrificially. He healed, he taught, he fed the hungry, and he broke social norms. It even challenges our cultural norms of leadership, and cause us to embody the love and humility of Christ in our relationships and our responsibilities here on this earth. So today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about our most recent Stormco trip and how we were able to serve others. So for those of you who may not know, Stormco is a service adventure initiative. Many churches and other youth groups visit different communities with the intent of serving others without expecting anything in return. The goal is to present Christian faith in action whilst building long-term relationships and positively influencing the community. The five foundations that encompass what Stormco is all about is to be able to listen, to engage, to serve without no expectation, to pray, and to, of course, return. And at Mangravat, we have been blessed with returning to Biloela for the past three years. So for those of you who may not know, Biloela is located approximately 120 kilometers inland from Gladstone, which from Mangravat Church is roughly six and a half hours up and in. It's a small rural town with not much to do. And you know that it's very small when there wasn't even a Kmart, Big W, Target, or anything like that within close proximity. And for someone within the fashion industry, unfortunately, Biloela probably wouldn't be the place that I would be. But nevertheless, this small, simple town offered Mangravat youth several opportunities. Through the leading of the Spirit to represent Christ and humbly give of ourselves for a short while, we had the purpose of serving the Biloela community. Through much prayer and planning, our theme for the trip was centered around love, with our key text found in 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 7. And it reads, love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered. It acts no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. 
It was school holidays and we had organised a children's club and throughout the morning within Villa Wheeler's local shopping centre. This consisted of balloon making, face painting, arts and crafts, storytelling and general interaction with the public. This central theme of love allowed us to share Christ's character, the God we love and choose to serve. We had Bible promises written on balloons and created simple yet effective crafts whilst highlighting a keen for each day. We had patience displayed through the form of a snail, hopefulness holding onto the promise of a rainbow, kindness through the delicate attributes of a snowflake, and lastly, a self-reflection mirror where thankfulness was shown in who we are and what we are grateful for. Worldly love is often driven by self-interest, convenience, and personal gain. It can be conditional, always expecting something in return. Whereas the love that we wanted to share through our activity was Christ's love. This is a love which is motivated by selflessness and genuine care for other well-beings. It is sacrificial and unconditional, seeking the best without expecting anything in return the prime mission and focus of what Stormco is. Ellen White beautifully writes, true love is not merely a sentiment or an emotion. It is a living principle, a principle that is manifested in action. True love, wherever it exists, will control the life. Thus, it is with the love of God. God is love. And in all of his works, in all of his dealings with mankind, his character is revealed. The Passion draws a parable between the true love and the love of God. It affirms that God's essence is love and his actions throughout history, including creation, redemption and provision, reveals exactly who he is. God's love is not abstract or theoretical, but is a tangible expressed in his care for humanity and his desire to reconcile us through Jesus Christ. The Children's Club was one aspect of this storm code trip, but the other consisted time spending our afternoons gardening. Teamwork makes a dream work, and with 12 pairs of hands, we got stuck in. Gloves on, we whippersnipped, mowed the overgrown grass, weeded and did several trips to the tip, giving life back into these gardens. However, there was one particular house that required just a little bit more assistance and resilience from us all. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but let's just say it was riddled in rubbish. I think many of our younger youth were appreciative of their parents always asking them to clean their rooms and having a tidy house. Whilst working, we realised that the owners of the house were actually laughing and filming us from the inside. And as you can imagine, we became quite frustrated, but were quickly humbled when we thought about Christ and the response he got within his ministry on earth. Jesus endured ridicule, rejection, and ultimately the excruciating suffering of crucifixion without even retaliating or seeking revenge. Instead, he prayed for his enemies and forgave those that persecuted him. For us, we had to remember that we were there to help, yet worldly love crept into our hearts, wanting a response or a reward for the acts of service that we had. However, God is good, and through the leading of his spirit, we were able to touch some people's hearts. It brought sadness when the children of Biloela shared that they would rather be at school than be on holidays, as there wasn't much to do. But what a joy that we could spend time with them, providing meaningful yet fun activities, being able to share God's love. It was also beautiful to see that many children actually returned with their parents each day, allowing us to form relationships with the children. We had people question why we were doing what we were doing, and we were asked the question of, how much are you guys getting paid for this? And with our response of, we choose to be here, free, with no reward. They were gobsmacked that we would even consider this. 
It makes you realize that a serving heart may be hard to find, but what a lasting impact you can create with just a few hearts that are willing. There was this one particular lady who brought her son on the last two days of our children's club, and to our pleasant surprise, she joined us for church on Sabbath. Thinking she was a Seventh-day Adventist, we later found out that she doesn't actually attend church on a Saturday, but on a Sunday. So for the Biloela SDA Church, this was a blessing to have someone new from the community. And it's encouraging to see that when we plant the seed and allow God to do the rest, beautiful things begin to grow within people's hearts. Despite being the Son of God, Jesus willingly took on the form of a servant, giving his life as ransom for many. He took it upon himself, the sins of humanity, to reconcile them with God. A true sacrifice. Service to others really matters. Christ even encourages us in Mark 16, verses 15, to go into the world and preach the gospel to all creation. As we've sung today, there's plenty of room at the table. Christ has reserved a seat for absolutely everyone that is willing to accept him. We are part of the family, the family of God, and that's a promise worth remembering. Paul highlights through his letter to the Ephesians that we should follow God's example and be able to walk in love. This command encapsulates the essence of who we ought to be as followers of Christ. We are part of God's mission field and plan for humanity, and we are his ambassadors. How awesome is that? When we say yes to God's calling, be prepared for blessings all around, for those giving, but also for those that receive. And it's my prayer that when Christ knocks on doors, our hearts are open. May we continue to build up God's kingdom. Amen. Together to Stompo. And you know how Gabrielle was telling you the story of someone that went, oh, why, is, why are they doing that? Are they getting paid? So it happens that I was outside of the little shop that we had, and we could actually be on the outside. And this man is just walking, and he just stands next to me. I'm on the outside, and he start, and starts looking inside. Hmm. And he goes, how much are they getting paid? I go, they're not getting paid. What? They actually took a week off of their work, of playing Xbox, of holiday time, going to see friends, and they're actually coming here to serve people. He goes, nah. But why? Because they love people. And he goes, darling, darling, come over here. And the wife comes, she was talking to somebody else, and he comes, look, look at that, look at that. And he goes, what? Those guys are not getting paid, and they're here. And he starts looking, and then he looks that the guys are wearing this shirt. And as you can see, the T has a cross on it. And he goes, are you guys Christians? Yeah. Wow. Really? Yes. And you guys doing this because we want to show the love of God to others. He goes, any chance that next year you could come to my church and show us what real love is all about. That's what service does. It's an amazing thing. When you actually do something out of love, people see it. Even if it is something very little. Today I want to talk to you about Storm Call. So that's our team. That's on the green wall. We're inside that little room. And we will just keep going around. And I want you to look, and we're going to be looking at Peter today. We're going to stay in Peter. And if you have your Bibles, I want you to start uh, looking for First Peter. Now, Peter spent most of this letter, this letter of First Peter, teaching 
God people that we are special. That's a very nice thought. You are special. And we have a unique identity. Something that is a bit different. And also that we have a mission. Identity tells us who we are and what we should be doing. Mission. And in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, if you have your Bibles, let's look at 2 Peter, chapter 2, verse 9. And just before we start reading, I will ask the Holy Spirit to be with us. Dear God, as we read the Bible, let the Holy Spirit talk to our hearts as we read this precious book. In the name of Jesus, amen. And in a bit of a paraphrase, 1 Peter, chapter 2, verse 9, says, We are his chosen people. Royal priesthood, you have royal blood, you have and priests, a body, a holy nation, God a special possession. God think God thinks that you are special. That you may declare the praises of him who called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light not into our light but into his wonderful light Peter shows us that we have to that we are living in a special time as well he tells us that we are at the end of times he tells us that we don't have anymore a priest like Aaron the Aaron priesthood. It actually says that now we are all priests. So we can pray to God at any time directly because of the intercession that is Jesus Christ. He also tells us that during this special time, there is no more tabernacle. And it also tells us that the prophecies are nearly to the end. So it keeps saying, even though this 2,000 years ago, it's saying Jesus is returning and is returning soon. For some of us, it may happen a bit sooner than others if we die. But he's coming very, very soon. And the more that we read the Bible, we can see the message is urgent. And also Peter tells us to go out into the community. He says, don't go and get and hide in the bush. Because sometimes we go, oh no, we need to go and head to the hills. That's not the time yet. The time is now. You have the opportunity to tell the world about his love. To share with others the love of God. To tell them who is Christ. Peter didn't run away. He talked to everybody that he encountered. And he did it with passion. We do not need to isolate ourselves, but go into the world to fulfill the mission that Jesus has set aside for us to do. That is to tell everybody about his love. And you know what? Peter also envisioned a community, a church. And the community that he envisioned was one of fervent prayer. People that actually pray, pray to God, ask Him for wisdom, saying, God, give us strength, etc., etc. It also is look for a community that will sacrifice for each other because they love each other. Is our church a place that we can sacrifice each other? 
we can sacrifice our time, our money for somebody else? Or is it a place that we just come to absorb? What is the church doing for me? He also wanted a community with hospitality. But not the hospitality that you get in a bad restaurant. A hospitality with a massive, huge smile. Going, welcome. I, warm, I'm going to give you food. Oh, you haven't eaten more. I'm going to prepare more for you. Where it doesn't end. A hospitality that is born from the heart. If you would know my mom, you go to her house and you can never, never stop eating. If she puts food in you and you finish and she will bring something else. Oh no, and bring something else. And that's culture. To show that she loves you. That you're welcome at her house and that she will keep giving you until you don't want anymore. And that's fine. But she will just keep giving. I want you to look at the passage of today. And that is in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10 to 11. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10 to 11. And it says, God has given each of you a gift. You, 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 you. Each one of us, a gift. From his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Do you have the gift of speaking? Elijah, Kesiah, Ella. They spoke at Biloila Church. They took the service. Then speak, though, speak through God himself who is speaking through you. Do you have the gift of helping others? Agnes and many others in this church, they love, happy, love helping others. Are you with that gift? Do you have that gift on your heart of helping others? And then he says, do it with all the strength and the energy that God supplies. Then everything you do will be, bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. Everything you do, if you're doing it from the heart, if you're going to do something for God, it brings glory to God. All glory and power to Him forever and ever. Amen. What a beautiful text. If you look closely to this text, Peter said that each believer has received a gift. We must use those gifts to serve one another. According to Peter, everybody in the church has something to contribute to this church, to our community, every single person. I do not know what your gift is. We can, if you don't know, come and see me. We can try to figure out what it is. But every person, young, kid, old, tall, short, wider, skinny, <laughs> every single person has a purpose. You have a gift that God has given you. Are you using it? When you look at this letter, it's particularly important that you think about who is he addressing. The people that he was writing this letter, many of them had lived lives of idolatry to false gods. They were praising and worshiping false gods. And now... They have learned the truth. Many of them were living a really brutal, sinful life. And they have met God. And they have met Jesus. Many of them 
had been outcasts of society. They've been completely outcasts. They didn't belong. And yet, Paul is talking to them. Many of them were Jews, some of them Gentiles. But they all had one thing in common, Christ. And they had been born of the Holy Spirit. They had the Holy Spirit burning in their hearts. This is who he's writing the letter. Everybody's different. But now they're converted. They're justified. Born of the Spirit. And they all had something to offer. To the rest of the church. And the rest of the world. Hope. Love. Kindness. Gentleness. Self-control. Etc. 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 Every true believer has something to offer the church and the world. Every believer has and can be a gift. You can be a gift to the rest of the church and to the community outside these walls. The Holy Spirit also empowers us empowers each and one of us to make a difference in that community. Before Jesus ascended to heaven, he says in Acts 1.8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be what? My witnesses. To be a witness, you have to tell people what is happening. You will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, through Judea, in Samaria, to the ends of the earth, to Biloila. So the Spirit was with them, will be in them, and will finally come upon them. And with the Spirit upon you, you become a strengthened for the work of God you you being a strengthen part of God's spirit is coming apart empowering us by the gift of the spirit it's been empowered by the gifts of the spirit so that means how do you get empowered by being less selfish by being more loving. First Corinthians 12, verse 4 to 7. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts. But the same spirit is the source of them all. We can all have different gifts, but they all come from God. Simple. There are different kinds of service, but we serve the same Lord. Somebody could be cleaning. Somebody could be singing. Somebody could be opening the church. But we all serve the same Lord. God works in different ways, but it's the same God who does the work in all of us. A spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. Can you see that there is nothing in that text that is about me, me, me? A spiritual gift is all about others. What are you giving out? We all have a spiritual gifts, and it's our duty to use them for the common good. And when God gives you his gifts, we have to use them. Like this man here, Elijah. Oh, where are you, Elijah? There it is. You ask Elijah to do anything, and he says, sure, I'll do it. 
no matter what. He can be a clown eating all the popcorn. <laughs> but then he goes at being a clown and talks to the, an old man. And then he goes and helps pulling out the roller door that nobody else can reach, but he can because he's nice and tall. Then you have somebody like Gabriel, youth leader, organizer, get everybody in line. Different gift altogether. Then you got someone like Furaha. I don't know if she's here. Oh, there she is. She's too lovely. She can make friends with anyone. She just starts a conversation and she goes, ah, oh, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, oh no. Now you're your be- she's your best friend. True or not? Yeah. yeah. Now, these beautiful young ladies, Elena and Isabel, they are locals from the Bilawila church. And you know what gift they have? Teaching. They will go to the little kids and show them, this is how you do balloons. Oh, this is what you do. What a beautiful gift. Then we have Sarah, Lulu, Ella, Janica, Kylie. Oh, the hours that they spend face painting kids. I'm loving every bit of it. I couldn't think of anything worse to do. But they loved it. That's their gift. Oh, Lily and Haley. Lily organized all the crafts and Haley helped her out all the time. Man, I'm so useless at crafts. <laughs> so I admire them. They're awesome. Then, oh, you have Shane, you have Kesiah, and you have Dasso. And you know what they're good at? Teaching other people about God. Making friends with those people. Creating a relationship. Especially that photo at the top. Dasso and this kid. This young boy came the first day. And every day, all he wanted to do is come to do craft, do things with Dasso. And Dasso will tell him stories about Jesus. We'll just ask him about how's he going in the school. He felt loved. That's what service is. Service to others really matters. That's Storm Call. And then we have Wendy and Brennan. Without them, we would have got hungry. Or we would have put a lot of weight and gone and get fast food. They cook for us every day. They enslave themselves in the kitchen and they cook for 12 people. What a wonderful service that they did for us. And if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have been able to do anything else. Everybody has a different gift. How are you using the gift that God has given you? Jesus tells us a lot of parables, but one of them, he talks about three men that are left with some talents, some coins. And then he says, I want to see what you do with them when I come back. Two of them, they give him some profit, but one of them, what he does, he hides it away. He doesn't do anything with it. And what happened? Did it duplicate? Did it become more? That parable tells us that we need to use our gifts, what we have, to help others. And as Ute was showing on the story, when you give out, you double. You have more to give. And the more that you give, the more that you actually feel fulfillment in your life. Peter said that we should be good stewards of God's gifts. We must use the gift God has given us. We must fulfill 
the assignment of go and make disciples of Jesus. Go and make disciples of everybody. Go and tell them how much God loves them. It, regardless of what they've done in their lives. Doesn't matter. God loves them. And all they need to do is start having a relationship with God. And then their life gets changed from the inside out. We are meant to be stewards of God's gifts. But we also need to serve with the strength that only God can give us. In 1 Peter 4.11, we read this. Do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. All of us are called to serve in the church. We must serve one another in families. Men, in their, they have to serve their wives. In groups, men must serve each other. In ministry, we all have to serve to each other or to the outside world. But Peter also talks about the gift of service, the gifts of generosity, leadership, the acts of mercy, of helping, of administration. With these gifts, we are meant to serve ourselves, each other, and the people outside these walls. But Peter said, we must do it by the strength that, who supplies it? God. It's not our inner strength. It's not what I can do. It's because he gives us the strength. We must tap into the strength. And the first one is the strength of faithfulness. We need to have God a strength of faithfulness. We cannot remain committed to serving others if we're not faithful. If I said, yeah, I'm going to do that. And then when the day comes, it's like, oh, you know what? Uh, I'm feeling too tired. I just had a tough week at work. I don't feel like doing that anymore. Is that being faithful? No. Faithful means if I say yes and I don't have the energy, I ask God for the energy. Because he is the provider of that energy. I saw the commitment from these young people. Every time that somebody got asked to do something, they didn't winch about it. Even though they were tired, even though they were staying until way too late, talking too much, still were going, yeah, sure, I'll do that. We need God's strength to push through a lack of appreciation. That video, if you would actually understand that in the other side of that house, I actually couldn't stand up. I was like, bleh, bleh. however, some of these young people, I said, don't go there. They go, no, no, we got this. We cornered off a little area, not, no go sign. And then they did the rest. And I was like, bleh, bleh. I admire them. Even though those people were photographing them and sending videos, you know what? Doesn't matter. We cannot remain committed to serving others if we are not faithful. But also, when you serve others, sometimes others will treat you like servant. It doesn't feel great. But God can give you the strength. God can give you the strength to endure, endure that lack of honor. He loves you. He sees you. He sees the service that you do. And that all it matters. Because you're showing his love to others. The next one. It is endure of shameful treatment 
It's part of the same video that I was showing you. But serving people means dealing with people. And sometimes people are not very nice. They do hard things. And if you've ever been in ministry, I can tell you, somebody is going to say the ba something bad about you. It doesn't matter. Ask God for a strength to you just go. You know what? Let them be. That's what we need to do. Ask God for a strength to deal with things. Rather than, you know, I'm not going to do that anymore because nobody appreciates it. Mm, I'm done. We need God's strength for the energy we need to do the work. Now, if you see these two girls bringing 20 kilo bags of grass, <laughs> they're heavy. And they walk all the way from the back to the front. While Elijah was going with the lawnmower, they were picking up all the clippings and then bringing them off. If you don't have the strength, we have to ask God for it. Maybe you can help with pathfinders, adventurers, helping hands, food pantry, the veggie garden, a stone call. There is a mission trip that is coming next year. And the pastor Sandy wants to go to PNG. Maybe you want to do that. Maybe you can help a friend by going after hours to see them because they're just having a bad day. And you go, you know what? I have to get up early to go to work. That's a sacrifice. Ask God to give you the strength to have for the next day. And be there for your friend. That's as much serving as cleaning the gutters, as cleaning the church. Go and help somebody in need. That's what service is all about. We need to ask God for humility. To God's strength for humility required to serve well. These young ladies, they just picked up and they just start going for it. All they wanted to do is help. I don't know, they have never probably picked up one of these with snippers. And it takes a, a lot of energy for a little while. But they were keen. Where they get the strength from? Where did they get the humility from? To just go, you know what? I'm going to do this. It's an honor to serve God by serving people. But our natural self doesn't like it. We're too proud. But the Holy Spirit can strengthen you. So you can do that. Ask God for the strength. We need God, for a strength, for cheerful and patience. Cheerful. Can you see all those faces? Do you see them going? They're all happy, having a good time. Even though they're tired, even though they've done gardening the day before, they, we've been doing this, staying out late, we've been doing all sorts of things. They're happy because they're doing the work of God. And God gives you the strength. He gives you the cheerfulness to do it. He gives you the patience to put up with each other when we have very little sleep. God is the source that you can overcome any problem when you're thinking about serving others. And all you need to do is just ask for it. So, let's serve one another. Let's serve our community with the strength that comes from God. Because he's the, the supply of all our strength. Extend yourself. Make disciples. Practice hospitality. Let's be nice to each other. Helping a ministry. Maybe counsel some friends. Maybe encourage someone. Use your life well. If you're called to serve, 
and it's in your heart, but you really don't know what to do, guess what? You can come and see me. We will talk and we will find a place where you can serve. You can talk to Gabrielle. She would love to maybe enroll you for the next storm call. You can talk to any of our elders. There will be love. They will love to help you to find what is your gift, what is your place to serve our almighty God. Remember that this life is not about wealth accumulation. This life is not about peace accumulation or experience accumulation, but it's about God and our relationship with Him. It's not about us, but how God wants us to serve others. Society tells exactly the opposite. That everything is about you. You, you, you. And then we serve a God that's saying, you know what? It's all about showing my love to others. That's very different. So, my challenge for you today. How are you going to serve God? How are you going to put your talents, your gifts, to help others that may be in need? The less fortunate. Maybe the ones that are going through depression. Maybe the ones that are having a marriage breakdown. Maybe little kids in our church or little kids outside the church. Maybe single mothers, parents that are struggling. How can you help? Maybe just to clean up your neighborhood. I gave you some options, but if you need more, please come and see me. And First Peter 4.11 says, the last section of it, then everything you do will bring glory to God. Through Jesus Christ, all glory and power to him forever and ever. Amen.